Welcome back. We're joined by Broadway Market Manager Kathy Peterson. Kathy, thanks so much for stopping by. Oh, sure. Thanks for inviting me. It's great. Now, Easter <coughs> season, it's a tradition <coughs> for many families, especially in this area. Talk to me about that. Sure. So Easter at the Broadway Market is absolutely a tradition. Um, uh, we have uh, the market's always been a Polish market. It's a hundred over 130 years old. So over the years, <coughs> families, <coughs> excuse me, don't want to lose my voice. Yeah. Um, continue to come to the market to buy their Easter foods. So Polish sausage, baked goods, Easter plants, Easter wooden eggs, pussy willows. So all those things um, that go into their Easter basket, which are then blessed on Holy Saturday. Um, people come in uh, to the Broadway market during the Easter season. And now these are like family-owned businesses that keep getting passed down, right? Talk That's to me correct. about that. That's correct. So Lupus Meats, Camella Meats are family-owned businesses that have been in the market for well over 30 years. Famous Horseradish as well has been in the market over 30 years. So that's um, so that continue, they're all family owned businesses. Actually, all the businesses in the market are small business, uh, small businesses, uh, women owned um, and family owned businesses. So it's um, it's great. That is market. amazing that, you know, here on Daytime Buffalo, mm -hmm. that's all we're about, supporting local small mm -hmm. businesses. And it's an amazing thing to see family and generations get to pass on those traditions and share it with our community. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to know about the Krushiki Bakery coming back because I may be new, but I'm hearing this is a yes. big deal. <laughs> so Krushiki Bakery was a long staple in the Broadway market. Um, they left during the pandemic. And, uh, and so this year they are coming back. They'll be back for Easter, which is great. They're also a family owned business. They actually started in the Broadway market probably 30, 35 years ago. Wow. And so um, they're very much a wonderful Polish bakery and it's great to have them back this year. So our sneak peek is this weekend where you get uh, uh, most of our Easter vendors will be open Saturday and Sunday. Saturday, we actually have the Rinse and the Dancers and the Blarney Bunch performing. Oh, you'll be seeing them in just yes, a few minutes. Yes. Stick around. And, <laughs> um, and then March 25th is the actual kickoff. And what it is, it's a 16-day festival where we're open every single day, including Sundays, and then with extended hours the last few days, Good Friday and Holy Saturday. Then we close for Easter and reopen for Dingus Day. Oh, another and I, big event. I hear about that. Right. I've heard about that. Yes. Very fun. Yes. So another big event. So you're going to have to come down. Of course. Let me know. I'll give you the tour. Now, I want to know what is your favorite memory from oh, the market? Oh, well, I've been at the market now for quite a while, and the best part is working with all the businesses because they are family-owned. Mm -hmm. They are very dedicated to the market, and um, it's just wonderful uh, we have events all during the year, so it's always great to have an event and people come in and check us out and see what's going on. Um, but Easter is a special time because people come back who came as children with their grandparents or parents, and now they have children, so they're continuing. So I'd have to say that's it's really great to see. It's also wonderful to hear people say, "I love the Broadway Market." Yeah. <laughs> so. And it's, it it's must good. be special to see families, like maybe you saw the kids working and helping out the family uh, years ago, and now they're running it for the family. Well, exactly. So um, I started, and uh, Camilla Meets, the manager, Adam, is Adam Chahaki, um, uh, uh, over the course of the 10 years, has gotten married, has three children, <laughs> and now they come in for Easter and see the Easter Bunny. So, um, yeah, it's great. Very special. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited about this and experiencing this. Do you guys have any other special events coming up? Well, Easter is our, so Easter starts, as I said, uh, this weekend, and then March 25th is the two-week festival. Then Dingus Day. Dingus Day is a great event at the market. We have a wonderful polka band. Um, happening and then the parade starts about 5:30 and goes by the market and then in the fall we have a holidays at the market a wine festival um, we have a great black history month celebration in February so we have a lot of different events throughout the year but the market is open at Monday through Saturday 8 to 5 all year long alrighty now if you guys would like to find out more information all of the vendors at the market you can head over to their website that's broadwaymarket.org thank you so much oh, for coming sure. in and you know where to go this weekend. Yeah, make sure you email me and I'll give you the tour. All right. All right sounds great. good. Nice to meet you. In honor of Women's History Month, UVA has opened a new exhibit all about women making books. CVS's uh, Brenna Keifner has an inside look at all the artifacts you can expect to see. 
It really is the range of women's experiences as reflected in the book objects. Inside the Albert and Shirley Small Special Collections Library at UVA, Women Making Books is the newest exhibition people can admire. This collection is comprised of 23 items dating from 1773 to 2021. An English professor, Andy Stauffer, says that a collection like this celebrates all the hard work women have done to be respected in the writing world. We have such a, a, a wide-ranging and uh, historically deep collection of American books primarily. Um, I, this was a great way to show off a range of those items. Women were involved in all aspects of creating a book, and the curators of the exhibit want you to ask yourself questions, such as what would it look like if women had control over every aspect of their book with their name attached to it, since most of the time, women had to hide who they truly were. I think the big takeaway is how writing is more complicated than we imagined. So we really approach this by what does it mean to write a book? Well, you can do a lot of different things, and the poster shows it, binding, recycling, altering, designing, editing, that these are women making books and being writers in ways that we wouldn't necessarily always think of as writing. I got an exclusive look at the exhibition and saw all kinds of work. From a 2021 UVA alumna's work of creating stories by using blocks, to 1800 scrapbooks, Phyllis Wheatley's first book, and even decorative books featuring pressed flowers and woven hair. There is a message everyone can take away from one of these pieces. I think it's, it's worth acknowledging how um, women, for you know, various reasons, are marginalized in addition to their gender, um, are, are not just like breaking through a glass ceiling, but are like building like a new structure entirely. The Women Making Books exhibition is open from now until June 10th. The Niagara Falls chapter of Lynx Incorporated is holding a Black Family Wellness Expo this weekend, and here to talk more about it is Lee Whitaker and Stephanie Dudley Tillman. Thank you both for coming in. Well, thank, thank you for having us. What can we expect to see at this Wellness Expo? So we are truly excited. So this year, for the first time, the Lynx Incorporated, they're hosting a Black Family Wellness Expo. It's going to be a nationwide event, the first time ever. So there are over 299 chapters across the nation. And on Saturday, they will be promoting wellness and health within the black communities. So we want to reach out to our communities, provide them with some information regarding health disparities, but also provide them with information regarding wellness mm -hmm. so everybody can be healthier and happier. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> can we talk a little bit about what Links Incorporated is and what you guys do? Well, she gave me a script, and I am going to read it. <laughs> Just as she gave it to me, all right? Uh, the Links Incorporated is an international, not-for-profit corporation established in 1946. The membership consists of more than 17,000 professional women of African uh, descent, and we are located, there are 299 chapters, uh, located in 41 states, the District of Columbia, the Commonwealth of the uh, Bahamas, and the United Kingdom. It is one of the nation's oldest and largest volunteer service organizations of extraordinary women who are committed to uh, enriching, sustaining, and ensuring the culture and economic survival of African Americans and other persons of African ancestry. Uh, members of the Lynx Incorporated contribute more than one million service hours annually. Incredible. And, Can we talk a little bit about yeah. the health disparities in the black community and why it's so important to have an event like this? So it's very important to have an event like this because um, we know that heart disease affects many people in America, but in the African American community, um, we don't always have the education and the opportunity to get out to utilize resources. So what we want to do is to provide this expo to allow them to come forth. Um, we want to um, prepare them, help advocate for them so they can advocate for themselves. So we'll have companies there like um, American Red Cross, mm -hmm. Alzheimer's Association, Community Health Center of Niagara Falls, uh, Create a Healthier Niagara Falls, um, Mount St. Mary's Hospital will be there, Niagara Falls Memorial Medical Center. So we'll have a lot of groups there. We'll have DJ, we'll have food trucks, and then we're giving away gift cards every hour. Nice. So um, we're looking forward to supporting the community, but 
um, helping to decrease the disparities, the high blood pressure, the diabetes, the high cholesterol, heart disease, kidney disease. So we want to provide that information to them, allow them to make changes in their life, and we look forward to doing this annually. So this yes. is the first time this event will take place, but we will do it annually. That sounds like an amazing event. Now, is this going to be really family friendly? Is there going to be something for all ages? Yes, we're mm -hmm. going to touch bases on infants to seniors. Okay. Um, we want everyone to be healthy. So it will be family friendly. It's also a free event. Mm -hmm. And again, we'll have raffles, we'll have music, we'll have giveaways. So it'll, it'll impact the community. What are you guys most excited to see? The community. I'm yes. excited <laughs> to see them come out. I'm excited yes. to see them have the opportunity to receive these resources. And as we always do, we service our community in Niagara Falls. We provide for them. We sponsor many events. But this event alone will be able to impact on the health of our community. Absolutely. This is so important and it such is. a wonderful thing that you're doing for our yes. community to get mm -hmm. them out. Our health matters, not just physically, but mentally. Yes. And sometimes it's not about people not wanting help. It's about Correct. them not having the resources, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. So this is a great thing that you guys are doing. Uh, where is this going to be happening? It's going to be in Niagara Falls mm -hmm. at Harry F. Abbott School at 1625 Lockport Street. The hours are from 11 until 3. Perfect. Okay. Well, we are so excited. Again, the Black Family Expo, Family Wellness Expo is happening Saturday, March 18th, 11 a.m. to what time? 3 p.m. 3 p.m. You can find out more information uh, over on our website. Still to come on Daytime Buffalo, we've got some Irish dancing right here in our studio. Keep it here. You don't want to miss it.